How do you pack up over 7,000 works of art? Galleries are redeveloping and expanding and building new buildings and moving collections all the time. So there is a lot of experience out there and the great thing about the arts industry is people are more than willing to hand over their knowledge and talk to you about some of the challenges they faced. We went on a bit of a fact-finding mission and spoke to our colleagues and then formed our own plan of how we would approach it. The first thing we had to do was go through and audit every work in the collection. The audit relates to measuring each work, height, width and depth. Some have very ornate frames, some are very vulnerable. And then we make decisions with the conservation team about what's the appropriate and the best method of packing that work. One of the great opportunities to have come out of this is that we've been able to digitise our collection. Some of the works have been in store for more than four or five decades and we don't have high resolution images of some of those works. So it presented a great opportunity for us to set up a temporary photographic lab and really take great documentation of those works. We actually install the uh, 2D works into two-dimensional T-frames built to size. Essentially they form a frame around the perimeter of the work with some buffer around the edges and then we attach those through brackets which we fix to the back of the work and then bolt into the frame to protect that work when it travels and also when it's in storage. We engaged an external industry crate supplier to help us with this and one of the challenges that came about due to COVID is the supply chains because either materials weren't available or particular types of screws, bolts and fixtures weren't available. Very early on we had to make a decision with our crate manufacturer to look at a different type of timber because there simply was none available in Australia at the time. Another integral part of the project is condition reporting. After we've assessed the condition of the works to travel, we also need to take good records and documentation before any work leaves the gallery. It's really, really important to do this because when the works return back to the gallery in the new space, then we need to make sure they are in the same condition that they left in. We're lucky to have some really great skills on the team and seeing them grow and learn as we go along has been such a rewarding part of the project. Personally for me, uh, one of the things I really enjoyed about the project, I often hear ooh or ah and somebody's you know, found a very early Lloyd Rees work or a Streeton that they didn't know was in the collection. And it's almost like, you know, finding your favourite shirt down the back of the wardrobe. Here's this thing that's been in storage for such a long time, you know about it, you haven't really seen it in the flesh. And it's completely out of context with a, an exhibition. So you're actually seeing this work sort of unexplained and you get to visually encounter that work. It's so uplifting. It's much more than the artwork itself. They're, they're, they're a living thing, they're a living part of our history. Everyone has a story and understanding it and getting little bits of that story as we pull them out and pack them is a really rewarding part of the project. And then understanding why we need to be as custodians so careful to look after those works because they are part of Australian art history. <laughs>